I would say the most important thing for me, just believe in yourself. His attitude and his effort from day one, humility, discipline and respect, he certainly holds all of those values. He has achieved something that wasn't ever achieved. Can you now move on to the next stage and do it on a senior level? If you believe in your dream, you can go out there and work hard enough to make it come true. I started playing at a very young age, from as well as I can remember, you know, just kicking ball whenever I can and playing in the playground and playing with my friends. It led to me joining a local club, Hilly Fielders, at the age of nine. That season, I performed well and was scouted for Chelsea. I was there for four years up until under 14. I was then released. It was just about rebuilding my confidence, you know, obviously, after being released, you know. I obviously thought I was obviously doing well up until there, so it came as a shock. So it's just building my confidence back up. Very shortly after I was scouted, you know, by Ian Gilmore, who was a scout at the time, and I joined Arsenal at the age of 14. And it's pretty difficult for all the clubs to make decisions, but we took a chance on Eddie because we believed, you know, that he would be slowly developing into a striker that can really score goals for us. I can remember Eddie joining the club, leaving one club who would have told him for whatever reason that he wasn't in their plans and joining a new big London Cat One club is always difficult and, and something a little bit new, but we liked his movement in the box. Um, we thought he was clever. And even at that age, he, he had a real eye for goal. We saw him as someone that had, um, had potential. We took him and had the patience and he developed just in the right way, you know, at the right times. I just remember being excited, just being back in the academy setup and, and he was a new fresh start and great foundation. And, I learned a lot that year. When you talk about resilience at a fairly young age, he has to be sort of physically and mentally robust and and pick himself up on on, on his next part of his journey. And um, he hit the ground running in terms of his attitude and his effort for, from day one. I think Arsenal as a whole is a great academy and they're very supportive of young players and any players you know that are going through difficult times. That season really boosted me back to where I wanted to become. I remember being there with the likes of Josh, Reese, Joe. It's a lot of the boys that you know I'd grown up with, and it was a great feeling. I think just seeing the stadium and you know actually being down in the changing room and you know mixing in with the shirts, it was it was amazing because obviously I'd been there to watch as a supporter, but I'd never been behind you know and, and seen. And I think. That really just made it kick in, you know, that, wow, I'm actually going full-time at Shenley. And, yeah, I know my family were with me at the time. And, yeah, it was just a sense of joy and happiness. Like a lot of players that have gone on to be successful for us, Eddie went from Helen to Colney, I believe, on just a scholarship. And like a lot of things that Eddie's had to do, he had to then earn his next contract. My first call-up was under 18 for England. I remember I was playing the 23s game and Carl was the manager, assistant manager at the time. He came to me and said, don't get too excited, you've got a job to finish. But I had a call from someone at England and they're looking at you. So I was obviously delighted. And then after he came, we won, they had a good performance. He told me, actually, you've been called up, you know. And it was just a surreal feeling, you know, I think. I was just buzzing. I have the feel of putting on the England shirt and, I ran home telling my friends and my family, just looking forward to the camp, I couldn't wait for it. I've got the match ball signed and framed somewhere in my house as well, so I try to keep hold of the sentimental things that you've collected. In general, you get a sniff of our academy players, you know, during training. You kind of never know who's coming over, who's needed really. I was always a guy that always used to say hello and try to integrate them as quickly as possible. I remember my first pre-season tour, you know, to Australia and China was amazing. I think I was still coming to grips with, I was only 18, I was coming to grips with the 
the fact that I was obviously mixing it with, you know, some of the best players in the world, you know, I used to just look over and think, wow, man, like, I'm actually really here, you know. You get a kind of a feel for players once you see them on the pitch and play against them. And with me and Eddie, it was kind of, yeah, you 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 see him and you, you see that as a striker and he probably come against you. And, you know, that first feel is always um, pretty much important, you know, what kind of striker he is. And I can only say that, you know, Eddie is a striker I, I didn't like to play against, you know. Very agile, very quick, and he always bothers you with um, how, how he presses and how he tries to nick the ball off you. So, a, a strike, a type of striker I, I never liked to play against or train against in the first instance and, and first time I met him. I think the first game was my obviously senior debut. Um, we played in front of 80,000 fans, so it's an amazing feeling. Arsenal was the manager at the time, and you know, obviously he's such a great manager and such a you know, gentleman, and he made me feel so welcome there, and you know, instilled a lot of confidence in me. You know, so. Traveling around the world and learning new experiences, it, it helps you, you know, to grow as not just a player but as a person. Was whipped in. Great header, there's the equaliser! And what an impact from Enketia! His first touch, and Arsenal have equalised! Corner comes in. Oh, what a header! He's done it again! Enketia has scored for Arsenal twice! It was a fairy tale of a night, as we all know. He scored the equaliser and then obviously got the winner in extra time. Everyone remembers when he comes on, you know, scores the header, you know, and then kind of earns his way up and makes huge impacts for the first team. And then, and then you earn the respect, not only in training, but if you can score in games, in pivotal moments, that earns you respect on the next level. And I think Eddie thrives, you know, through, through, through an environment that is really challenging for him, you know, especially when you then went with the 23s, went with the first team to train, to see what the level is and adapt to it. I think that was his major strength and then make an impact. The environment at Arsenal is that, you know, even the best players are always trying to do extra and keep pushing themselves. So yeah, every time I went over to the first team and I saw, you know, the level and the quality of the finishing there, I used to go away and think, OK, I need to up my game and I need to be better. I was just very confident in that time of my career and I think that was really a kicking point. You know, my career and allowing me to really kick on and I start making a name for myself. Niketia, Aubameyang wants it played. We're about to hit the four minutes. And Niketia squeezes it in for a third Arsenal goal and a first Premier League goal for the 19-year-old. Cups in seven, and it's a record 14th FA Cup success for the club. Arsenal have won the FA Cup. When I was, you know, named captain of the 21s for the game against Kosovo, it was an unbelievable feeling, you know scoring a hat-trick on my first game as captain and getting a win so uh, definitely it's been an honour to lead the side and you know, I've enjoyed every time I stepped out with the armour. I remember the, the moment I did it against Turkey and I equaled it against Andorra when I came off the bench and you know, it was in my head to obviously try and score and 
to do it on this day. And I think when I scored, actually, I felt a sense of relief and enjoyment, but it wasn't really till I went home and I was with my family when I really started to take it in, you know, I just celebrated it like I celebrate any other goal, you know, with a smile on my face. I think when I saw, you know, the happiness of my family and obviously the congratulations messages when I got home, I started to realise, you know, obviously the magnitude of the, the record I broke. It was great, you know, actually, Alan's a great guy. When I did equal it first, um, he messaged me and said, congratulations, you know, kind of go on and, and beat it kind of thing. So obviously he followed it up with another message saying, congratulations for beating it. So now nah, he was very supportive and obviously he was nice for him to go out of his way and congratulate me. So I was grateful and obviously he's a top guy and an unbelievable player. So I'm really grateful. At one stage, you get rejected as an individual, you know, and then you doubt yourself, you, you get doubt from your family. Your Eddie um, was taken on by Arsenal and really took care of, and he walked through the door. You know, we opened it a little bit and he really walked through it. And, and that what makes us as, as Arsenal really proud. We want everyone to fit in there. You know, Eddie is just a prime example of a strong Angana playing at the Emirates which is brilliant, you know, and we love it because that's what we do on a daily basis. But make sure as well, you know, that these youngsters who make a debut for the Arsenal first team, you know, still remain great examples and role models on and off the pitch for our kids. And Eddie, you know, embodies that completely. Arsenal is a big family club, so, you know, whenever someone does well, we always, you know, celebrate it together. Even the fans, you know, I got a lot of messages from the fans saying, Congratulations and well done kind of thing. So yeah, it's just about working hard and focusing on your club form and you know the rest of it will take its take care of itself. We've got a corridor at Hale End where when you walk down it it has a, a picture of a of an academy graduate um, with the with their name and the date in which way they made the debut. The final question at the end of the tunnel is who's next? I think it's just about getting the best out of yourself and obviously focusing on your own journey rather than others. And I think if you do the best you can and you know, you have to believe that it's achievable, you know, and have strong faith and belief in yourself and you know, no matter what anyone says or if they put you down or if you go through troubles, just know that you can do it. <laughs>